Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. We have with us today three-time Thiruvananthapuram MP, Dr. Shashi Tharoor. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Right off the cuff, uh, the first question is that you've been talking about how the Congress is facing a crippling leadership crisis. What do you think is an immediate solution? Well, I think immediate solution is to end the uh, perception of drift and indecision that so many people have about the fact that uh, uh, two months after the elections, we still don't have uh, a president uh, uh, in office, Rahul Gandhi, the incumbent, announced his departure very soon after the election results came. His um, uh, resignation was not initially accepted, but then uh, about a month into that period, he issued a, a definitive letter that said he could not be persuaded to come back. And on that basis, uh, we expected some movement by the CWC to name at least an interim president as the um, constitution requires. But nothing seems to have happened. There have been no public announcements. There is a, a sense that uh, the party doesn't quite know what to do. And that doesn't help in an environment in which the BJP is busy undermining our party in places like Goa and Karnataka and God knows elsewhere. There will be uh, other, uh, shall we say, poaching bids by the BJP. We've seen it, for example, uh, with uh, Telugu Desam, Rajya Sabha MPs uh, from Andhra. We've seen it today with NCP MLAs from Maharashtra. At which point does it all end? I mean, if we don't have a decisive, uh, strong opposition to resist all this, we risk reducing ourselves to a one-party state. Despite not having a definitive leader, it seems like the Congress has been taking key decisions like appointing Pradesh Congress chiefs, which all come signed as has been taken by the president of the Congress party. So even if we consider that Rahul Gandhi has resigned and he's declared that he's resigned, then who is taking all of these decisions? No, I believe that while resigning, he did say that until new success is appointed, he would fulfill all the necessary functions. So presumably the president referred to is still Rahul Gandhi. But in the old days, the, the name of the president was often mentioned. That's not been mentioned this time. And, um, and all I can tell you is, is a guess. I think it must be that Rahul Gandhi, as the departing president, has uh, okayed these appointments that we've seen in announcements for, or indeed any other announcement that normally requires the president's authority. But uh, clearly, he has not been his usual active self as a president, and that he doesn't consider himself to be... Uh, fully in office, it seems, that he has really been, um, in many ways, um, uh, taking a back seat on, on many issues. Uh, we haven't seen him much, uh, either in Parliament or on the streets, in the last few weeks. And as a result, um, there is a perception, perhaps unfair, that there is a vacuum at the moment. And that vacuum needs to be filled because politics, like nature, abhors a vacuum. Talking about, again, inclusive India also represents, in terms of how inclusive is Congress as a party, you've said that uh, the president should be elected and not selected. So, I mean, considering the fact that there's going to be a Gandhi in Delhi, irrespective of who is elected, what use is a president, many have asked. Now that, I think, is an unfair question, because um, uh, I would see the Gandhi family collectively as a sort of conscience keepers of the party. Um, and we've seen uh, a sort of diarchy working on many occasions in the Congress's history. I don't think Mahatma Gandhi was a member of the Congress Working Committee for most of his years back in India. But uh, if he approved or disapproved of a course of action taken by the Congress president of the day, it certainly was reflected. In other words, uh, the, the president was running the party, but Mahatma Gandhi was the keeper of the flame, the keeper of the conscience. I think in similar ways, I would imagine that whoever takes over, uh, the Gandhis, I don't believe, uh, from what we've heard from Rahul, are interested in running the day-to-day -day affairs of the party, uh, at this stage anyway. But um, I'm sure that their endorsement would be valuable and their opposition would be decisive. I mean, there's no question about that. So they would be, if you like, in the... Uh, I know Mahatma Gandhi seems a bit of a stretch to you as an analogy, but that sort of role, that somebody uh, who the party's DNA is inextricably linked with the DNA of the Gandhi family. So their presence and their uh, influence is bound to be great. And I don't think any Congress president is going to survive by being an anti-Gandhi. It's going to have to be somebody who at the very least uh, takes the Gandhis along when required and doesn't do anything to antagonize the Gandhis the rest of the time. But there is one Gandhi whose name has kept propping up ever since we've started talking about Rahul Gandhi definitively making an ex exit and that's Priyanka Gandhi Vadra. What is your take on her taking over as chief? 
No, listen, I think Priyanka is a very attractive idea and there are very many party workers would be thrilled if she were to throw a hat into the ring. But we already had Rahul Gandhi's statement that no member of the Gandhi family will replace him at this time. And that, if that's the definitive view, which so it seems so far, then in that case, I don't think we're going to be able to uh, look for that, for that option. My view about the election idea is that even if it were to be someone from that family, going through the process of election would simply enhance their legitimacy and credibility. Look how Sonia Gandhi gained in people's esteem and respect when she contested and, and won an election against Jitendra Prasad back in 2000. So that kind of um, process gives a president a certain level of clout when there is, uh, in this case, no incumbent. I think Sonia Gandhi's re-elections were un un uncontested. But today, uh, whoever comes is going to be new. We've just gone through a generational transition a year and a half ago, and now suddenly we are in the market for a new president. The best way to um, address this, this problem is to do it through a, an open election and a transparent process. But Sonia Gandhi is more of an exception to the rule if you look at Congress history, right? She's one of the very few presidents who've been truly elected. Most of them have been selected by the CWC and then ratified by the AICC. Do you think at this juncture there might actually be a breakaway from that sort of Congress tradition and a, and a fresh election? Yeah, look, if the CWC names an interim president who's widely admired or liked, it's entirely likely the AICC process will be a ratification without any serious contest. Uh, but if they decide to name somebody who is uh, senior enough to keep the party together while announcing a process that will attract other candidates, then I can well imagine a free and fair election in which different generations uh, may well be re reflected amongst the candidates. And the process will actually, I think, galvanize public interest in the party in a way that uh, perhaps a mere appointment and ratification will not do. And uh, again, what about you as a candidate for the top post? Look, you know, Diksha, that's very flattering of you to ask, but honestly, I don't see myself in that particular frame, largely because I have not been an organization man. And, and what you need is somebody with the experience to run the organization. We have lots of bright and capable people, much younger than me, who've had more experience in the organization than I have. Uh, secondly, I've not held a party position other than chairing the All India Professionals Congress, which caters to a very small and influential community, but is still seen by many as a niche organization with a relatively small membership by comparison with the uh, challenges that have been taken on by a party president. So I would not be surprised if, um, if uh, somebody with better organizational credentials were to emerge and, and, and put themselves forward. And certainly, um, uh, I would like to see the party in good hands as far as the organization is concerned. And I really have been relishing my role in Parliament, where I've been privileged to speak in 16 debates already. Uh, I'm 16 bills already and in 35 debates or so in just one session, which may well be a record for me and perhaps for most other people, because um, the party asked me to do so. And I feel that um, being able to put the ability to articulate a point of view uh, to do my homework and come up with um, with the kinds of positions the Congress Party is proud to be associated with. That's been my, my great contribution in this session, and I'd like to be able to make that kind of contribution in future sessions. So that may be where we're each pay, playing to our strengths. I'm hoping you'll give us three key takeaways that Congress should definitely have learned from uh, from this from this leadership crisis that it has been facing for the last two months. One that it seems not just unable of solving, but also unwilling to solve. Three oh, I, I think you've been a bit unkind, <laughs> unwilling to solve or unable to solve. I think the party was genuinely taken aback. When you've just gone through a generational change in December of 2017, you don't expect to be looking for a new president in um, in, in, in June of 2019. That, that really, uh, I think, is why the um, existing Congress institutions were taken aback and perhaps uh, that came across in the way in which they dealt with the problem. But it's taken too long now. You know, we can understand a certain amount of shock and hesitation for the first month, still hoping that Rahulji would change his mind and come back. But once he definitively issued that letter and slammed the door, I think we should certainly have, uh, have moved much faster than we have moved. I think uh, one thing is very clear that uh, the party um, has an indispensable role in the country, in the country's democracy, and that that role requires a certain level of um, decisiveness when it comes to uh, addressing our internal issues. 
Um, that is one takeaway from this present, uh, uh, present crisis. The second thing I would say is um, one thing we haven't done and which has been pointed to now more and more in sharp uh, contrast to other parties is to marry our work in parliament with our presence in the streets. In other words, take one example. I mean, I led the party's attack on the RTI bill calling for it to be saved. We had a very strong and robust view, both on the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. But where were they stop RTI agitations by Congress okay. Party workers in the states, in the cities, which would have been natural for us to do, but largely because there was no one to give direction for that. Um, and, 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 you know, if you want to be a political party with a nationwide footprint, which is what we are, you also need to manifest a nationwide presence. You cannot be just a party in Parliament. So, for me, my work is in Parliament, that's my strength. But we have a whole party organization throughout the country. They should have been out there uh, on an issue as vital to the well-being of uh, the average Indian Aam Aadmi as, uh, as the RTI. Um, uh, it's a pity that our very robust work in Parliament was not backed up by uh, equally robust action uh, on the streets uh, of, of our country. Um, those are two clear takeaways. The third one, I think, is a need for a process because the Constitution um, seems to assume that transitions will be fairly smooth and simple, that an interim president will be uh, accepted as soon as uh, uh, the, the president resigns and that uh, the ICC session will be convened. And the Constitution was written in the days when the ICC met every year. There was an annual election for a Congress president. Those days are long since gone, and indeed the ICC meeting every five years is not always guaranteed. So in those circumstances, having a clear-cut process and the possibility of something unexpected like this um, would actually be a worthwhile thing for us to install. And I s would like to suggest respectfully that the process I've suggested is one that has the largest potential appeal both to party workers who would feel that their views count and to the public who would see the party exercising a democratic uh, uh, practice which ultimately will give us a leader who hopes one day or aspires one day to lead India. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. This has been a very informative conversation. Uh, for The Print, this is Zeeksha Bhardwaj. For more exciting political discussions, do subscribe to our YouTube channel.